this is part of our culture. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just kind of pushing all these stands out. It kept us alive and going, uh, thriving. We would make the baskets, we would take them, sell them. We would make them by the big load folds and sell them on the side of the, the road. Back then, they weren't getting very much for these, but this is how we survived. These are all handmade by Ho-Chunk. They date from about 1910s through the present. Most of these were woven by women. Traditionally, the women were the weavers, and the men were kind of the mechanics that hold the basket together. Well, in many ways, they are just like an ordinary basket in that they are functional. So you might carry a basket shopping, to the market. You might use a basket for your sewing, for a picnic. Sometimes the, the basket might be used for a more traditional purpose. Um, we have some very large feather baskets that would have been used to collect eagle feathers. Um, there are purses. Sometimes they would use the bark to create these little canoes that are really fun to, to see and experience. And they're all made from black ash trees. Everything in here, every component of every basket is made from the black ash tree. It's very pliable. Versus the white ash, the white ash is very brittle. Um, with the black ash, the black ash were able to manipulate it, twist, turn once we wet it and it's in its natural form like from the tree. It's very easy to work with and use and then make our design. Hello everybody, my name is Kimberly Crawley. My parents were Sydney and Christine Hall. We grew up in Wittenberg, Wisconsin. I am a Thunder Clan of the Ho-Chunk Nation. I have been making baskets for about 45 years. If you can imagine after cutting the, the tree down and you see all the rings there, each one of those rings is a strip. So depending on how much water the tree got that year, how thick the, the black ash strips are gonna be. When we scrape them down, that does two things. One, it keeps the splinters down. And two is when we're scraping down on the material there, we're actually pressing the, uh, the fibers together more. It makes it more, more bendable and uh, easier to work with. Everything that we are gonna need for our baskets um, is pretty much in the, ba in the bag here. This is my granddaughter, Brooke. Brooklyn has been with me for no. almost 11 years doing baskets. And so I'm hoping she will continue teaching and keep the basket making thriving within our tribe. I like to share. It does me no good to keep it all, all within me. I'm hoping to spark an interest. Maybe somebody else will pick it up. There she blows. All the hard work. You can't buy this in your store. It's pretty cool, isn't it? What are you going to do with it? Sign it. <laughs> I think it's really important to just step back and appreciate kind of the aesthetics of everyday objects. Just because it has a function doesn't mean that it can't be a beautiful object. As the Museum of Wisconsin Art, 
We really strive to exhibit art from all the different communities kind of in our reach, including Indigenous art. And it's something that I think MOA is leading the way and are really proud of. Thanks for watching the Arts Page. Please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more stories of art in our community.